We thought that the Indiana weather was gonna give us a break this summer, but it's really hot outside right now. Not only is it really hot, but it's super humid. The humidity the last couple of days rivals at any other time that I can ever remember. And for those of you who have been keeping up with our channel, you know that we've had some problems with our air conditioners here in the RV. Again, we're parked at my parents' house for a while, and I think we've been having electrical problems, not inside the rig but the power coming from the electric company i think we may be at the end of the line we're seeing some pretty decent voltage fluctuations throughout the day that's a whole nother topic not really something i want to get into but we have had some issues with our acs this year and it's made keeping this rig cool really challenging so that brings us to today's video where i'm going to talk a little bit about this portable air conditioning unit that we acquired now initially this doesn't sound like something that's real difficult to do but I'll be honest with you, it's been a little bit of a challenge figuring out how to actually use this thing. And I don't mean how to turn it on and off and up and down and all that kind of stuff. What I mean is, you know, where to put it, when we use it, what temperature to set it at, you know, how often do we want this thing to cycle versus, you know, cycling the rooftop air conditioner unit. So that's been a little bit of a challenge. And today I realized the reason or the cause behind one of the issues that we've been having using this portable air conditioning unit. So that's what we're going to talk about today right after this really cool intro video. So again, this thing has worked out pretty well for us. Now, again, we are still trying to figure out the best way to use it, but in general, it has kept it much more comfortable in this RV on those hot days. Now, as you probably suspect, these things aren't really intended to be used inside of an RV, which can make them a little bit challenging to set up and install. So for example, the window fittings that they give you to run the exhaust out of the window, they don't really work very well in an RV. So I had to get a little bit creative and all I did was I just went to the local hardware store, I picked up a sheet of tinted plexiglass and I cut it down to fit my purpose in the RV. It really wasn't difficult, but because I was using a different fitting than the manufacturer provided, I kind of had to get creative with it in order to make a connection in that ductwork that would seal in that plexiglass so that I wasn't bringing unwanted warm air back into the rig as I'm trying to cool it down. And I'm not really gonna get into how I did that. Um, I didn't shoot video on that because I really wasn't planning on on including this in anything, but you can see here what that looks like. And basically this duct hose just runs from the back of the AC unit through this little plexiglass piece, and then it shoots it out the window on the back side of our RV. So I'm not gonna get super in depth, or really I'm not gonna go into it all about how I made this and how I installed it, but I just wanted to put it out there that it is relatively simple. Anybody with some very basic skills using a jigsaw can build one of these things with with no problems. So what I want to do now is talk about kind of the pros and cons of these portable air conditioning units, you know, why you might want to have one and, you know, maybe some things that you would want to consider before you purchase one. And then I want to get into one of the issues that I've been seeing every time we use this unit and why I'm seeing that issue. And then, you know, if there's anything that can really be done about it. So let's talk about the pros of these things for a few seconds. So for me, one of the top reasons to have one of these is because it is portable, right? So living in an RV, that's super important to me. I need it today because it's hot and it's humid outside, but tomorrow maybe I won't need it and I can just pack this thing up and just put it in a closet somewhere. The second reason that I really like this unit is that it was really easy to install. I did have to get a little bit creative with it, but once I kind of had a picture in my mind of what it needed to look like, it was really simple to do. Number three, these units are relatively cheap. When you compare it to one of the rooftop units on your RV, those things can cost you, you know, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars to install in your RV. 
All right, wait a second, homie. Let's try that one again. You can get one of these for eight, nine hundred bucks, a thousand dollars. You can get a pretty good rooftop unit. Anyway, whereas these portable units, you can pick up a really good one for maybe three or four hundred dollars. So, for example, this one right here is made by Honeywell. I don't have any association with them. It's just the one that I happened to come by. But this one retailed for somewhere around, I don't know, 430, 440 bucks, something like that. So it's much, much cheaper than one of the rooftop units that you probably already got installed in your RV. <laughs> Next, for those days where I can get away with only running this unit, this unit is much quieter than my rooftop units. So even with the RV airflow system that I have installed in my rooftop unit for the living room, this portable AC is just a lot quieter. And then the last pro I think that I will point out about these portable units is, well, they're portable again. And maybe I want to move this thing into the bedroom at night, you know, once we go to bed so I don't have to run those rooftop units overnight. I can just pick this thing up, take it into the bedroom with me, get the exhaust set up out through the window, and I'm good to go. So now let's talk about some cons or maybe just some reasons that you know, you might want to consider before you buy one of these units. So first of all, let's talk about where this is being used, right? So this is being used in an RV. So we all know, and I've said it in numerous videos in the past, these RVs are just little heat boxes. It does not take much to heat these things up and make them uncomfortable. Not only that, but they're just not sealed airtight. Now, houses aren't sealed up tight either. I understand that, but these RVs have got a lot more openings to the outside than your typical house does. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about these portable AC units. So this one is a 10,000 BTU AC unit. So in a typical house, this thing is going to be able to comfortably cool a 450 square foot room. So when you think about RVs, that's about as much square footage as you're ever going to come across in one of these. So what I'm standing in here is a 42 foot fifth wheel and it's about eight feet wide. So the rough math brings us out to somewhere around, I don't know, 300 to 350 square feet. Plus you have the slides, which are gonna give us just a little bit more space to cool. So the area of this RV is going to be well within the specifications of this 10,000 BTU AC. But again, keep in mind, this thing is just not airtight and it's never going to be airtight. And not only that, but it just traps all of that heat from the sun in it all throughout the day. And it's very hard to keep cool. So that's really the first con that I want to talk about with these units as far as being in RVs. They're just not going to be as efficient in this space as they would say in a sticks and bricks house. All right, now the second con that I'm gonna talk about here is the fact that we all know that space is a premium inside of an RV. And as you can see, this does take up some space. It's not unmanageable in size, but just keep in mind that it is something else that's going to go in your RV. It's going to take up space. And more importantly, it is going to add a little bit more weight. I think this one here weighs somewhere around 50 pounds. And this is a pretty big unit. So I think this is probably about the most that you can expect these things to weigh. Next, we all know that air conditioners are going to remove humidity from the air. These portable air conditioners, according to what I've researched on the internet and what I've seen so far in here, is as long as it's not just outrageously humid inside of the space you're trying to condition, this thing is not going to produce an appreciable amount of water or condensate that you're going to have to drain out of it. What I've read about this is that as long as you stay below about 70% humidity, this thing's never going to get any water in it. And it's not something you're going to have to worry about draining on a regular basis. The good thing is that most of these, if they start filling up with water, they'll get to a certain point and then the AC will just shut off to prevent that from spilling out all over the place. One last con before I get back to one of the pros that I forgot to mention a while ago. But this last con has to do with what happens if this thing breaks. Well, 
according to what I've read is it can be significantly more difficult to repair these or get these repaired than say a typical AC unit, whether that's for your house or for your RV. There just aren't going to be a lot of serviceable components inside of this unit and probably not a lot of components that you can just order and replace yourself. Now the last pro that I wanted to bring up is that this unit uses significantly less power than my rooftop units. I have two rooftop units. So one is a 15,000 BTU and that's in the living room. And then I have a 13,500 BTU in the bedroom. They both draw about 13 to 14 amps. Whereas this unit here is a 10,000 BTU unit and it draws almost right at nine amps when it's operating. Now keep in mind, just like your rooftop units, these are still going to have a surge of power when that compressor kicks on. And I was a little bit worried about that bringing it into the RV because I wasn't sure if I was going to either trip a breaker or maybe even trip out a string of GFCI outlets. So luckily the outlet that I plugged this into right off the bat isn't one that's off of the GFCI string. I think if I remember right, it was about 22 or 23 amps of surge current when this compressor starts up. Okay, so maybe it was 30 amps. It still wasn't enough for an instantaneous trip on that 15 amp breaker. And that string of outlets is protected by a 15 amp breaker. And that 15 amp breaker has a sufficiently high enough instantaneous trip set point to allow this compressor to start up. But overall, if you're limited on power, this can be a good solution, especially if you are in a smaller RV, because this unit is only going to draw about two thirds of the power that a normal rooftop unit is gonna draw. Now there's one more downside to using this type of portable air conditioner unit. But before I get to that, I wanna talk just a little bit about how this machine operates and how that's different from how your normal rooftop AC unit is going to operate or how your residential AC unit is going to operate because there is a significant difference and that difference in operation between a normal AC unit and a portable AC unit inside of an RV can potentially cause another issue that's going to affect the efficiency of these portable AC units. Now, I don't wanna to go too far in depth on how air conditioning systems work, whether they be a portable air conditioner or a rooftop air conditioner, but I do wanna go over the basics real quick. I wanna cover kind of the cooling cycle, how that works, because that's gonna be important to understanding why the portable unit here is different, how it operates different from a normal air conditioner and how that difference affects the efficiency of this unit. So let's dive into this real quick. I'm not gonna to get too nerdy on you, but I think it's important to understand that basic concept of how this cooling cycle works. Okay, what we're looking at here is a basic diagram of this air conditioning cycle. Now, the first thing I wanna point out here is that all of the components, all of the pieces and parts that you see in here are the same pieces and parts in nearly every air conditioning system out there. It doesn't matter if it's in your sticks and bricks or if it's one of your rooftop units in your RV or whether it's one of those portable units that we're discussing. All of these pieces and parts are pretty much the same and they all pretty much have the same function. Now, as far as how this portable unit operates and how that differs from your rooftop unit, I'll get into that in just a few minutes. But first, I just wanna walk through this basic operation here to help you understand what the difference is and why it's important. Before I get into the pieces and parts here, I kinda wanna explain this is really two kind of separate systems. Basically, we have this system on the right, which is blowing air over cool coils, and it's exhausting that air into your living space. So basically, it's just recirculating air from the living space. It draws it in, takes it across these coils that cool the air down and then exhausts it back into your living space. This part here on the left for a typical air conditioning system, this would be outside. And all this is really doing is taking the heat that was taken out of the air in your living space and transferring that heat to the outside air. 
So first we're going to start out with the evaporator. The evaporator is simply where the heat gets removed from the air that circulates in the living space. The evaporator is basically a set of cooling coils that has low temperature refrigerant circulating through it. As the air passes over these evaporator coils, the coils remove the heat from that air and then send it into the living space. Next is this blower. The blower is simply a big fan that recirculates all of that air in the living space. Next we have the condenser coils and the condenser coils are basically where all of that heat ends up after it's removed from the air inside of the living space. That refrigerant that was flowing through the cooling coils eventually ends up over here in the condenser coils and air flows across those condenser coils removing that heat and transferring it to the outside air. Moving on to the compressor. The compressor is really just what pushes all of that refrigerant through the system. And all it does is it compresses that refrigerant that's inside of those coils, makes it hot at one point, and then as it goes through the system, it expands, and that's what cools off that refrigerant so that it can remove the heat from the air in the living space. Next is this fan, and this fan is simply to create that airflow through these condenser coils so that the heat can be removed and transferred to the outside air. Next is a filter. Every air conditioning unit should have a filter just to help keep the system clean. Moving on to the thermostat. Everybody is familiar with how a thermostat operates. Again, every air conditioning should also have one of these. Now that we've covered at kind of a high level what this air conditioning cycle looks like, I want to point out the difference between the portable air conditioning unit that I'm talking about in this video and a regular air conditioning unit that is, again, going to be either in your rooftop or in your sticks and bricks. Like I said in the beginning, there are kind of two different systems here. You have the inside system that's removing the heat from the living space. And then you have that outside system that's taking that heat that it removed from the living space and transferring it to the outside air. So as you can probably tell, this part of the system over here is located inside. This part of the system over here is located outside. Now that's for a normal air conditioning system. The difference in the portable air conditioner in construction is that all of these components are contained within a single unit that is inside of your living space. So how does that make the operation of this unit a little bit different? The answer to that is in the fact that the part that's normally outside is now inside. So as you can see from the drawing, this part of the system that is outside would normally draw the air from the outside and pull that air through the condenser coils to remove that heat and then it exhausts it right back out to the outside. Now when we talk about the portable AC unit, because all of these components are inside, it's actually drawing air from inside of your living space to cool off these condenser coils and that air is now significantly hotter than it was before it went through these condensing coils. So we have to do something with that air other than just blow it right back out into the living space because that would be counterproductive. It would be like running an air conditioner and a heater inside the same space at the same time and that obviously doesn't make any sense. So that's why these portable air conditioners have an exhaust duct hose that has to be routed through a window to the outside environment. You don't want that exhaust air from the condenser coils to go right back into your living space. So now what we're doing is we're drawing air from the inside of your living space and we're blowing it to the outside atmosphere. So for this part of the system, it's very similar to the roof vent fans that you have in your RV or in your sticks and bricks house, you can look at it as very similar to your attic fan. It's pulling air from the inside and it's pushing it outside. All right, so now that that basic lesson in the air conditioning cycle is over, what does that difference in operation really mean for how this is going to work inside of a space like an RV and how's it going to affect the efficiency of how it operates? So if we go back to the reference of the vent fan installed in your roof, think about when you want to operate that. You want to normally 
turn those on when it's cool outside and you want to draw some of that cool air into the RV and then out through the vent. So what happens then if you were to shut all of the doors and the windows but you leave that vent fan operating blowing air out that creates a little bit of a negative pressure inside of your RV because that fan is wanting to blow air out, but it's having a hard time drawing air in from the outside. Now, as we all know, these RVs are not airtight. So even though you have all the doors and windows on, you could probably leave one of those fans on and it is still gonna draw some of that air in from the outside. So thinking about that reference and going back to how this unit operates, again, it operates very similar. It draws air from the inside and it blows it through that condenser coil and then that hot air has to be exhausted outside. So again, we are creating a bit of a negative pressure inside of our living space. And because again, these RVs are not airtight by any stretch of the imagination, what that means is that we're actually drawing in air from the outside environment around us. And that's not good because again, that air is the hot, humid air that we don't want inside of our RV. Now these units are gonna have enough cooling capability to overcome that heat that you're drawing in through those cracks and crevices in your RV. The problem is that it's drawing in the humidity along with that heat. And what I've found out over the past couple of weeks is when we have hot weather, but it's dry outside, this unit works extremely well. It cools the air inside of the RV really well without bringing in extra humidity from the outside because the outside air is already relatively dry. Now, over the last three or four days, it has been super humid here. I think right now it's uh, almost 80% humidity outside and it's about 82 degrees. So when I turn this on right now, I'm drawing in 82 degree air from the outside at 80% humidity. And my rooftop air conditioners are kind of working overtime, getting rid of as much humidity as it possibly can. If I were to go out and look at my gutters right now, the condensate from the air conditioners would just be pouring out of gutters on either end of the RV. And unfortunately, when it's that humid outside, when you're drawing air in from the outside that is that humid, none of these air conditioners can keep up with removing all of that humidity. I've even been running my dehumidifier on continuous mode on full blast and it's not enough to keep that humidity down. What I found is on these really hot and humid days, if I'm running both of my rooftop air conditioners and this air conditioner all at the same time, it does keep it pretty cool in here, but I can't control the humidity as well as I would like to. Typically that humidity hangs out somewhere between about 60 to 65%. And it may be 73 or 74 degrees in here, but that humidity just kind of makes it feel a little bit soggy. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of high humidity. I'm also not a fan of humidity that's too low. Humidity that's too low, at least for me, really wreaks havoc on my sinuses and my breathing. So. Personally, I like my humidity to be somewhere between about 40 to 50%. You know, 45% is really about the ideal humidity for me. But again, when I'm drawing all of that humid air in from the outside, when I'm using this portable AC unit, I'm not able to control that. It probably hangs out somewhere around 60 to 65%. So what I'm showing you here is a little bit of a visual of how much air this portable AC unit is drawing into the RV when it's operating. So what this is, is basically just a Kleenex or a tissue that I've got hanging from the blinds. And then the window behind the blinds is open. Now what you're seeing here is before the compressor kicks on and before we start sending that air from the inside through the condenser coil to the outside, that Kleenex, that tissue is relatively still in the window. And then what we'll see here is as soon as this compressor kicks on and we start sending that air from the inside to the outside, we're gonna start drawing air in through that window and you're gonna see what that does to that tissue paper. Now, as you can see, that's no insignificant amount of flow coming into the RV. And I realize nobody's gonna have their window open or you shouldn't have your window open while you're operating this thing. But again, because of the way these RVs are made, it's just impossible to get these things airtight. And you wouldn't want that anyway because then we'd be pulling a vacuum or a negative pressure on our living space and that wouldn't be comfortable either. 
Now I'll point out that if you're using one of these portable AC units inside of your sticks and bricks where there's just a lot more volume of air inside of there, so even if you've got it in a bedroom, you're probably not going to notice this effect as much. When this thing is running, it's going to be pulling air from the rest of the house, which is typically going to be cooled by the residential air conditioning system, which is much, much more powerful than the portable one. And it's gonna have that drying effect on that air Air that's being sucked into the room from the rest of the house that's going through this air conditioner. I'm not trying to confuse anybody on all of this, but if you're using this in a much larger area like your house and you're just using it to cool down a single room, you're not likely to notice a significant change in the humidity inside of that room because that residential air conditioning unit is going to be drying that air out much more efficiently than this unit does. So that's the basic difference in operation between this unit and a normal air conditioning unit is that everything, all of those pieces, parts, components are all inside of this machine right here. So again, that means that for us to be able to remove the heat that's inside of this RV, we have to take that air and shoot it outside. When we do that, we're creating that negative pressure inside of here. And consequently, we are sucking in more humid air from the outside. And there are two main points to keep in mind with that. So number one, this unit again, has enough cooling capability to overcome that warm air that's coming in, just the, the actual temperature of that air that's coming in. However, on really humid days like we've had around here, that humidity that's coming in, there's really nothing that you can do about that. Like I said, I've got two rooftop units running. I've got this unit running, which doesn't remove a lot of moisture from the air, but it does remove some. And I've got my dehumidifier running, but even with all of that action going on, I'm still not able to get that humidity down below about 65%. Now I'll tell you this, as soon as I turn this unit off and I let all that other stuff run, within about 10 minutes, my humidity is back down to an acceptable level for me at about 45%. It doesn't take long to get that humidity down. However, the flip side to that is that once I do turn it on, that humidity does skyrocket very quickly. All right guys, so what is the real takeaway? Or what's the real point of this whole video? Well, what I really wanted to get across was the truth about operating these portable air conditioning units in a space like an RV. If you live in a region that has high levels of humidity, this is going to help out a little bit, but you're gonna to need to consider how a unit like this is going to affect the humidity level inside of your RV. Another thing you need to understand is whether or not that increase in humidity is tolerable for you. Because humidity plays a big factor in whether or not we are comfortable in a certain environment. We've all heard the saying, yeah, but it's a dry heat, right? Well, there is a certain amount of truth to that. So when you're talking about being in your RV, hopefully it's not 90 or 95 degrees in there, but you could have two different situations. If it's a really hot day and you only have say one or maybe two rooftop air conditioners, you may be able to bring the temperature down in your RV to say 80 degrees and have a comfortable humidity level of 40 to 45%. And you may be okay with that. Again, 80 degrees at 40% humidity is not terribly bad. Or if you wanted it to be cooler and you wanted a little bit of a cheaper solution to make that happen, you could use one of these portable air air conditioning units, but you got to keep in mind that that's going to bring the humidity level back up in your RV. So you may be able to bring that temperature down to 72, 74 degrees, but you're going to have to deal with that higher humidity. So there are a lot of things to consider here. You know, what's your personal preference on this? You have to kind of balance that. You know, what's the temperature you like versus what's the humidity that you like? And to be honest with you, you're really just going to have to play with it until you find that right balance. I wish I had the answer for you. I wish I could tell you exactly what to do, but everybody's different. Everybody's going to be comfortable in different environments. But again, the whole point of this video was to try and explain how these units operate, uh, what the pros and cons of them are, so that hopefully you can make a decision on whether one of these units is right for you. Now, I did want to go ahead and just provide my final thought on this, even though 
you know, I can't tell anybody when or where or how they should use one of these. All I know is that over the past few days of making this video and really putting this unit to the test, we've had some of the highest humidity levels that I think I've seen in a really long time. So I think for us, if those humidity levels are going to be, you know, 55 or 60 percent outside, that's just too much. It's too much humidity to be drawing back into the RV. The rest of what I'm running in here just simply can't bring that humidity down to an acceptable level. I just don't think that this portable unit is going to be an option for us in these kind of conditions. Okay, so I think that is gonna do it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button so that we know that you guys enjoy what we're doing. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And until next time, happy camping and stay safe out there.